Ashton here from Without Code, and welcome back to another tutorial video. Today I'm going to walk you through our new Shopify widget for the web builder. Shopify is one of the leading e-commerce platforms available. It's easy to manage, especially for those new to e-commerce and selling products online. Now we're pretty big on Shopify here at Without Code, and we've used it for years. Both our Muse themes and theme photos businesses are powered by Shopify. Shopify does offer a no-code experience for building websites and offers both website templates and hosting. However, one major drawback is that making changes to a site beyond the template layout is just about impossible without coding and custom development. We experienced this exact issue with our departing details business, which was hosted on Shopify, recently converted to Without code. There were several reasons for this change, but a big one is that hosting the site on our Without Code Builder provides us full control of the site without needing custom development on a regular basis for changes. Feel free to read more about this on our blog at wocode.com blog. Look for the business case study Shopify to Without Code article. Now, the beauty of this is that even though the entire business end is handled by Shopify, as in products, inventory, fulfillment, etc., all of that remains intact on Shopify and translates beautifully over here to Without Code. Our widget will be useful for those that have a Shopify store but prefer to work in Without Code for their site build, those that want to add products or e-commerce to an existing site, or those that are taking on a client that already has a Shopify store. So let's start by jumping right into Shopify to get our Shopify storefront token. This is going to be vital for linking the Shopify e-commerce functionality to the web builder over here at Without Code. Now I'm logged into our demo account, and here from our Shopify dashboard, we're going to go to the left sidebar here and select Apps. Then we're going to click down here for Manage Private Apps. And now we're going to create a new private app. Now here for our storefront API, we're going to select this option for allow this app to access your storefront data using the storefront API. And now here in the storefront API permissions, we need to select what types of data you want to expose to the app, in this case without code. And four are already selected by default, and we can leave that as is. We want to allow without code to read products, variants, and collections, read and modify customer data, read and modify checkouts, and read content like articles, blogs, and comments. So let's click Save. Now after we save the app, we can see here our storefront access token has been generated down here in the storefront API section. So let's copy this. And now we're all set to go to link this up to the widget over here in Without Code. Now I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time going into depth on the Shopify side of things or setting up an account or products or anything like that. It's pretty in-depth and we can probably assume you've already done that and are ready to incorporate your Shopify store into your Without Code site. But just keep in mind, if you are new to this, again, that all of your store functions, as in product creation, inventory fulfillment, SKU numbers, etc., will all happen at Shopify.com. You will not need to manage any store activities over here at Without Code. And this is a great situation if your client runs the store. Any changes made to the products or anything relating to the store will automatically be reflected on the Without Code site once you've got it published and linked up. So here in Without Code, I'm working with our eyewear theme, and I'm going to visit my pages list and click over to our shop page. Now this template technically has a store built in already, but we're just going to imagine that the site does not have any e-commerce yet, and we're going to integrate that now with Shopify. Let's jump into the widgets panel. And down here in our business section, you'll actually find that there are two Shopify widgets, both of which will be required for the full widget to operate. The first one we're going to work with is this one right here called Shopify Cart. So let's grab it out and drop it right into this empty row on our page. And if we jump inside the settings panel, you'll find that this widget serves two purposes. It links your Shopify store to your site here, and it's also where you control all of your cart settings. And let's talk about cart positioning really quick. The cart button will appear in either a manually placed position on the page or pinned to the side of a browser window. If we want to choose a manual placement of the cart button, you're going to need to place the Shopify cart widget here exactly where you want the button to appear on the page. Now if we want to use a pinned position, we can place this widget anywhere on the page that we like. And furthermore, if we want the cart to be pinned and persistent across the entire site, you'll need to place this widget in the header or footer. So let's do that now. I'm going to drag this down to our footer, and we'll put it down here under the social icon so it's out of the way. 
And remember, this temporary widget box will not show on the published site. The header and footer are global here in Without Code. So this means that when our cart widget is placed in the footer, as we've done now, when the site visitor adds an item to the cart and the cart button appears, that cart button will stay persistent even if they navigate away from the site's shop page. They can click on the button at any time to open the cart, regardless of where they're at on the site. So now let's look at these widget options. Starting with unique ID, just make sure to give this a unique name. We can leave this as is for now. Now for Shopify store URL and storefront access token. Now we've already copied our token, so let's paste that here. And Shopify store URL. This is super easy to grab as it's visible in the URL bar anytime you're logged in to Shopify. So over in the browser, up here, we can see this electrical-wires.myshopify.com. That's what we want to select and copy. And we'll head back to without code and paste it into the widgets panel. Now let's jump down here to these last few options. Checkout in pop-up. If you enable this, it will allow the checkout process to be completed in a pop-up here on the page. Now, if you leave it toggled off, the checkout process will redirect to take place on your Shopify domain. Next, we have cart labels, and we can expand this options panel here. And we've got a selection of verbiage that you can customize for different labels and functions of the checkout process. And finally, down here in cart settings, we've got some customization available here, allowing you to give the cart a title and toggle options to show the title, the product count, and or icon. And this top option here is where you'll customize that cart positioning I talked about a moment ago. Leaving this as pinned will keep the cart pinned to the side of the browser window. And with this now sitting in our footer, that'll be persistent site-wide. And if you opt for manual placement, the cart will then appear exactly where this widget box is placed on the page. So now let's grab part two of our Shopify widget into the widgets panel once again. And this time we're going to grab the Shopify store widget and we'll drop it into our row here on the page. Now that link that we put into the cart widget applies to the main Shopify widget as well as any additional instances of the main widget as well. So upon placing our store here on the page, we can already see our products previewing nicely here in the editor. Now we don't have to worry about sizing the widget container right now. We'll start by setting up a full store, which will be wide like the widget here is default. So starting in the panel here with a setting for unique ID. So you're gonna to wanna to enter a unique ID here for the widget if you intend to use multiple instances of the widget on the same page. We can just leave this as is for now. Next up is display mode, and this is a really important option. This dropdown shows us all of the ways that we can display our products here on the page. And the reason it's important is that this really determines how our store is going to feel and function. And this should probably be an easy decision because you're probably already going to know right away whether you want to, for example, display your entire store in a gallery or just display one product or a few products or even just say a buy button. So starting with all products, this will of course show your entire store in one grid. Single product will show just one product of your choosing. Collection will show a collection of products, which you can set up collections on the Shopify side of things. Products set, this will show a custom defined set of products. And buy button, of course, it's just a simple buy button. So I'm just gonna leave this on all products for now so I can run through the rest of the settings here in the panel. And I'm gonna come back to these individual display modes and show you how to set each one of them up accordingly. So next up for number of products to fetch. As it sounds, this is the number of products you want to fetch from Shopify. So you can show all of your products or a certain number, and this setting is most applicable to the all products display mode. Number of columns, this sets the number of columns in your store. So keep in mind that the products will be displayed in a gallery style layout. The gallery will be a grid with columns and rows. So the more columns you use, the smaller the items will appear and vice versa. This setting here is most applicable to the all products, collection and products set display modes. Product button action. There are three choices here for what happens when the site visitor clicks on the product button. And they're pretty self-explanatory and do exactly what the titles say, but you can add to cart, open modal, or redirect to checkout. Product display elements. This is an important feature that allows you to choose exactly which elements to display, like title, description, price, image, variance, etc. And we're going to come back to that when we run through the individual setup examples. Product labels. This submenu gives you the ability to enter custom text for the button label, out of stock label, and the unavailable label. Awesome. So now I want to quickly run through the steps for each of the display options, and I'll go relatively quick through these just to show you what they actually do. I won't spend too much time on elaborate examples, but let's start on the all products setup. 
by default, you'll already have this option showing. This is the mode to use if you just want a simple solution for dropping a complete store on your site. For product display elements, as mentioned previously, this setting allows you to customize exactly which elements you want to display. So let's click on add product element. And we now have a new element here for a title, and this can be changed with the flyout panel on the right side. And if you don't see it, don't worry, just scroll up a bit in the panel here. Now you probably noticed when I added this element, the store went blank. And the reason for this is that the display modes, such as all products, have pre-designed display elements. So you can think of the display modes like themes. Once you begin adding the product display elements, you are deleting the theme and then making your own choices. So from this submenu, we have a variety of elements that can be added, and you can simply repeat this process until you've added all the elements that you want to show here in the store. In our example, I'm just gonna keep this as title, and I'll add another one here, and let's make this one an image. We'll add another one for price. And let's add one more for button. Great. And using the three dot icons here next to each element, I can change which order they appear in, which is pretty awesome. Now let's jump up here and switch this to single product. This display mode, of course, is perfect for a single product. And like the all products display mode we just went through, you can custom select the elements that you want to be displayed. So now with single product selected, we now need to enter the product ID of which product we want displayed here. So let's hop back over to Shopify. And from our left panel here, let's click to products. And we'll select our product called the Mitchell. And now that we're on this page, we can see the unique number code for this product up here at the very end of the URL. So let's select it and copy it. We'll head back to without code. And we'll paste it here. And when we do that, we can see the display mode adjust accordingly right off the bat. The center product option here, by default, the elements will appear aligned to the left side of the widget container, but if you'd like the elements to be centered, go ahead and enable this option. Let's now switch the display mode to collection. Shopify uses collections to group products of your choosing. So use this collection display mode here in the Shopify widget to display products from a specific collection. All of your collections are managed at Shopify, but can be displayed as individual galleries here. So with the collection selected, we now need to enter a collection ID. So again, back in Shopify, under our products header here on the left, let's select collections. And we'll click into our summer collection. And just like the individual products, we're given our collection ID up here at the very end of the URL. So let's copy it, head back to without code, and paste it in the widgets panel. There we go. Now we can see the widget is displaying only the products reflected in the summer collection as we've set it up on Shopify's side of things. And beyond this, we have all the same options that we have in the all products mode. So we're good to go here. Couple more here. Let's switch over to products set in the display mode. As I mentioned, this allows you to make your own selection of products to display here in the widget, almost like creating an independent collection right here in the widget. So to do this, simply click add product ID and we get a list item here to enter a product ID. And just like we walked through earlier, you can grab your product ID from the URL of an individual product page in Shopify, paste that here, and it will be added to your gallery. And go ahead and repeat this step as much as you want until you have the gallery configured to your liking. Finally, let's talk about buy button up here in display mode. And this truly is the simplest way to use the Shopify widget. This display mode uses a simple button that you can place anywhere you like. So if you prefer to build your own product page layout, the buy button display mode is a great choice. So with buy button selected, we once again need to enter a product ID. So let's jump once again back to our Mitchell product here in Shopify. And let's find that product ID once again from the URL bar and we'll copy that. There we go. Heading back to the widget, we'll paste it in here once again. And when we do that, we now see a buy button displayed in the widget connected to the Mitchell product. And we've got many of the same options with the addition of button with quantity. This setting allows your buy button to display a quantity, which allows the site visitors to buy greater quantities than one. Okay, thanks for sticking with me on this one, guys. Before we close out, let me quickly jump over to the design section of our widget. We've got extensive options here for product styling, as well as container styling here in our widgets panel. Each of these has their own flyout panel. You can expand for various padding, color, and border styling options, among many options for text styling as well. 
Okay, I think that just about covers our new Shopify widget. Thanks so much, as always, for watching. We hope you enjoy this and find it a useful and handy way to incorporate the powerful e-commerce functionality of Shopify with the unprecedented design freedom provided to us here in Without Code. So thanks again. If you have any other questions or concerns, don't hesitate to hit us up and support. And until next time, my name is Ashton, and have a wonderful day.